In life, there are many occasions when a simple decision to turn either to the right or to the left may have disastrous consequences and repercussions affecting many people. You may have to make such a decision tonight. It is on this premise that our story is based. Do you mind? I'm awfully sorry. Is there anything to eat? No, just coffee. Two coffees, please. Why do devil's pictures have to be so big anyway? Well, Gerald's an artist. He has a mind above such squalid trifles. An artist? You're about the only person who thinks so. I don't see any point in clashing up your room with such pure old junk. Oh, you are a philistine. You've no soul, Tony. Oh, can we have two cokes, please, miss? OK. And another thing. What bird's going to come up to your room to see your unique collection of sporting prints and trophies? No one's going to climb the stairs to see a few yellowing photographs of you and ten other knobbly need nits. Say nothing of the piece of wood you used to knock a ball through the pav roof with. Oh, thanks. I'm mean, so thirsty. Angela is. Eh? I said Angela is. Is what? Going to climb the stairs. Angela Farley at the typing pool? When? Tonight. You scheming little basket. What do you mean? You never told me. Well, I don't have to tell you everything. There are some things in a man's life which he must regard as sacred. And how did all this come about? We were just talking. She said she was interested in sport. Did she? Hmm. Angela Farley, eh? <laughs> Who'd have thought it? She swims. Does she? Yes. Well, you want to watch your stroke. Old Burge of Accounts has got his eye on her. Imagine having a bath with Perry Mason and then going to bed with Dr. Kildare. Yeah, imagine. Um, don't look now, but uh, tell me, what do you think of that, uh, that bit that's just come in, the, the fair one? No, you'll never get anywhere there. She's not your type. You can tell that a mile off. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, what are you doing tonight, Jane? Going to the hip bath. Why, oh, are you swimming? You are an idiot. No, it's that new jazz club. It's fabulous. It's got heaps of atmosphere. I know. Sort of place where they stick candles in bottles to save on the electricity. I rather fancy my chances there. Anyway, it's worth a try. Well, there's nothing on I want to see of the pictures, and I'm blowed if I'm sitting in my room all evening while you tell Angela Farley how you scored 23 against Winchester and bowled a maiden over. Well, good luck to you. Anyway, they've got a gorgeous band, and there's always loads of boys there. Bohemians. They never wash, you know. My mum calls them dens of inequity. God, look at the time I've got to go. We've got so much to do. Yeah, I bet you have. Look, Tony, do me a favour. Like Take what? this back to my room, would you? Hell. Give you the key. All right, but if it comes any more undone, you'll be standing bail. Sure. Always am. Heavens, I'm late. I must go. OK, well, ta-ta. And watch what they put in your drinks. Has anyone ever told you you look like Debbie Reynolds? No, <laughs> I don't. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> oh, Thompson phoned just after lunch. Uh, yes, what did he have to say? Well, nothing very coherent. He phoned again at four and then again just about an hour ago. I told him there's nothing I could do. You should have told him there's nothing either of us could do. Thompson's a fool. Oh, he did seem desperately worried. Well, so he should be. Good heavens, Walter, don't have Thompson on your conscience. Any man who runs his businesses over a casino is going to start worrying someday. I know, I know. <laughs> it's just that I've known him such a long time. We were at school together. Oh, uh, that letter from McIntyre's people came whilst we were out. Looks as though you were right. I bet I was right. Good. Did you find out what time he gets in? Uh, yes, I phoned his London office. They said he'd be arriving here about 7.30, staying at the Grand. He has to fly to Paris tomorrow, so he suggests we meet him for dinner at the Grand and then come back here and go over the papers. Not tonight. Well, he's leaving first thing in the morning. Oh, damn. Well, there's no necessity for both of us to see him. Shall I go? No, I must go. Well, I think it's best if we both go. It'll flatter his ego. Uh, Miss James, get my wife on the telephone, will you? Hello. 
Well, Lisa, darling. Look, I I'm afraid I should be back late tonight. Yes, yes, I know, darling. But this McIntyre takeover bit, it's come up sooner than I expected. You know, the thing I was talking to you about last night. Yes, well, so would I, darling. But it is imperative I see this deal through. I just think of it. We'll be on the boat for America in a few days. Oh, I thought we were flying. No, I changed my mind. Thought it might be romantic that way. Yes, lovely. What time will you be home? Well, oh, no, darling, it's difficult to say. You know how these things are. I can't rush it. I should be back sometime after 11. Mm, I think I'll go spend the evening with Sylvia. <laughs> of course not, darling. Goodbye. Hello, it's me. Are you going to be home tonight? <laughs> yes, so did I, but he's going out. Mm, yes, so will I. No, no, nothing. I'll, I'll tell you when I see you. After 11. Oh, I'll park it in the mews. 7 o'clock. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, Sylvia, it's Lisa. I'm spending the evening with you, all right? Not till after 11. Well, if you should ring, you'll do your stuff for me, won't you? Oh, you know, I'm always careful. All right, darling, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Charles, it's past eight. It'll only take us ten minutes by a taxi. I'm trying to get through to Lisa. The catch on our garage door is broken. I must remind her to lock the inside door. Oh, she must have left by now. Yes, yeah, she must have gone to her sister's. There's no reply. So contemporary. Yes, yeah, not bad, is it? Not that you can do much with a place like this. 
Uh, it's damn difficult to get decent digs at any price these days. It's not as nice as the place I had in Chelsea. Do like that? Mm, yes, it, it's nice. To... Yes, yeah, it's rather fun, isn't it? Mm. Done by a friend of mine, a genius, actually. Oh, what's this? Champagne. Champagne. Do let me take your coat. Oh, but I thought we just popped in to pick up your scarf. <laughs> yes, yes, but I mean, there's no point in rushing straight out again, is there? I mean, uh, we should celebrate. Celebrate? But I thought we were going to the pictures. Yes, uh, that is if you really want to. Yes, don't you? Why, not all that keen. Not now. Why, you've got other ideas. <clears throat> Do let me take your coat. I'm quite all right like this, thank you. <clears throat> Look, at the calf, you said, why don't we go to the pictures? That is what you said, isn't it? Uh, yes. Well, then. Uh, well, uh, a figure of speech. Meaning what? Oh, do let me take your coat. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <sighs> well, what are we supposed to be celebrating? Is it your birthday or something? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, no. More important than that, my finding you, Jackie, our meeting one another. That's something to celebrate. Uh, my glass is empty. Do you celebrate like this, with champagne and everything, every time you pick up a girl? No, of course not. I mean, I don't pick... I didn't pick you up, Jackie. I just had to talk to you. You're different. Because I wouldn't take off my coat? <sighs> no, of course not, silly. I, I mean, I've never met anyone like you before. <laughs> Was you expecting to? <laughs> no. How could I possibly know that anything as marvellous as this was going to happen to me? But you had the champagne all laid out, just in case. Uh, I, I, I just happened to have a bottle by me. Oh. Uh, look, Jackie, why don't we... Uh... Oh, did your friend do this too? Yes. What's it supposed to be? Well, you see, it uh, represents the upsurge of the basic human desires culminating in a positive orgy of form and colour. <laughs> Rich and expensive. Mm, I'm a very expensive girl. And rich. That's your trouble. I don't cost you anything. You're a lucky man. Yes, you have a fine, rational sense of logic. But I happen to be in love with you. Darling, don't you mix up love with making love? No. I want you to divorce Charles and marry me. You promised. You promised you wouldn't bring her up again. Yes, but I want you to. But you've got me. Have I? Darling, can't we take our happiness when we can? Must you wreck my life as well? You want the best of both worlds, don't you? I'm cold. People are always cold without love. Then love me. Uh, come look at this one now. This is this really fabulous painting. The, the Rape of the Sabine Women. Oh, well, I think it's better from a distance. <laughs> it, it doesn't look much like what you say, does it? <clears throat> oh. I think your artist friend has got a one-track mind. Oh, I don't know. You ought to give him up. He's not good for you. You know, Jackie, uh, you take life too seriously. You want to uh, relax a little and enjoy yourself. Have another drink. No, thank you. I don't like it. Doesn't taste much like the champagne we had at my sister's wedding. Is it the real stuff? 
Of course. I'm never without a bottle. Why? Well, you never know when it's going to come in handy, uh, if you get bitten by a snake. Snakes? Oh, oh, I don't know, I feel giddy all of a sudden. Oh, well, better sit down, then. Oh, yeah, better sit down. Ooh. There, is that better? Oh, yeah. Y you, you haven't really got any snakes here, have you? Oh, I hate snakes. That's all right, I'll look after you. I'm terrific with snakes. Mm. Uh, but perhaps you'd better keep your feet off the floor, just in case. Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. Oh. I feel ever so funny. Here. Yeah. You haven't put anything in this, have you? No, of course not. Drugs. To make me sleep. What should I want to make you sleep for? To keep me from wanting to go to the plaza. Yeah, I'm not having any more of this. Oh, oh no. no. Come on, now, drink it up. It'll do you good. Oh, no, not me, it won't. You want me to drink that to do you a bit of good. Oh, I know your sort. I've read about you. Well, what sort of chap do you think I am? I haven't put anything in it. It's perfectly ordinary champagne. You're not used to it. That's it, I expect. Oh, yes, I am. I had lots and lots of it at my sister's wedding. Great big glasses. Big as that. Everyone did. <sighs> Funny feeling. Ooh. Well, why don't you uh, relax and put your feet up again? Yes. Yes, I could. I feel so cosy. <laughs> That's it. You did. What? You put something in it. I didn't put anything in your bloody champagne. That's it. Swear. Now you're losing your temper, aren't you? That proves it. You did, you swine, you, you sex maniac. Oh, I bet he gave you the stuff. Genius boy. He looks as sort of to mix up anything for kicks. Look, Jackie, why don't we just go to the plaza like we first said we would? With you? I wouldn't trust myself alone in the dark with you. Not even if you let me chop your arms off first. And don't you come near me or I'll scream. But Jackie, ah! Please don't scream. Whatever you do, don't scream. Please don't come near me. You, you're nothing but a champagne Casanova. You're crazy. I never even touched you. Yeah, but you would have if you could have, wouldn't you? Well, I might have if I could have, but you wouldn't let me. Oh, where's my coat? Ooh. 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 Oh, you wait till I tell my mum. What was all that about? I never even touched her. She's crazy. She said I tried to drug her. And did you? Where's Angela? Hello. Yes, I'm Tony Bridges. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, oh? she can't come. That was her father. Hard luck. Do you know she's only 15? 50? Impossible. Well, that's that then, isn't it? What are we going to do now? I've got a bloody great bowl of fruit cup. Could drink that, I suppose. Good idea. Waste. So is my champagne. I like your coat. Thank you. Where'd you get it? Portobello Road. Do you mind? Let's try it on. No, you'll only muck it up. Oh, don't be silly. Don't be so possessive. Very well, if you must. Knock it out in the rain with it. Go. Oh, yes. Oh, I like this. Now, if only I'd had this, perhaps I'd have got somewhere. You know, Tony, this does something for me. It's a great scheme. I'll grant you that. It's a great scheme and appeals, gentlemen. But uh, you do realize, thank you, that to meet the demands you envisage, we'd have to expand our air refactory into almost double its present capacity. Well, that shouldn't present any difficulties. But what about the finance? Well, as we see it, it's simply a question of a new issue of ordinary shares. Walter's got all the material on that. Oh, well, certainly. Now, Ian, we've gone through these figures very carefully. I think you'll agree that they show our position quite clearly. What do you
you doing? Looking for cigarettes, sweetheart. There's some in my bag. Look like that TV ad. The one with the man and the girl. And the caption says, for complete satisfaction, smoke so-and-so cigarettes. <laughs> and are you completely satisfied, darling? No, I'm not. And I won't be until I can spend every moment of every day with you. <laughs> that would be wonderful. But we know we can't. Why not? I'm not exactly broke. You would be if Charles ever found out. And what can he do? Sue me for enticement and make a fool of himself. John, who's your biggest client? McIntyre, why? I think I ought to tell you. Charles' company is taking them over. That's why he's going to America on Tuesday. Why didn't you tell me that before? About McIntyre? No, to hell with McIntyre. I mean about Charles going to America, because now we can... No, we can't. Because I'm going with him. Well, make an excuse, then. I can't. He already suspects something. Well, let him. Don't... Be difficult. Please, don't spoil our last evening together. You mean this is our last evening, then? <sighs> well, of course not. I'm coming back. I'll only be gone a month or two. Three at the most. He's taking me to California. Well, that'll be nice for you both, won't it? But maybe I won't be here when you get back. What are you talking about? You don't think I want to go, do you? Like hell you don't. He's taking me to California. You should have seen yourself. Well, if I've got to go, I might as well enjoy it. Don't be so unreasonable. Unreasonable? I like that. I ask you to marry me and you tell me you're going away with him. Besides, what's so special about California, anyway? What am I supposed to say? Send me a postcard? <laughs> I'd do that anyway. Darling, you're behaving like a spoiled child. Uh, look, we've had this out many times before and you agreed. Yes, but I don't feel the same anymore. Can't you see that? You promised me. I don't tell you what you must do while I'm away. Because you don't care, that's why. Well, of course I care. I'm, I'm madly jealous of you. All the time I'm away, I shall be wondering what you're up to. But this is something that must be, and we both know it. Don't you want me to come back to you? Yes, of course I do. But I shall hate you until I see you again. Darling, come back here. <laughs> You know how much I'm going to miss you, don't you? What are we going to do tonight, Tony? I think I'll stay here. I've lost confidence. No. No good. You need action. You're like a pilot who's had an accident. If you don't have another go straight away, you'll be finished for life. Didn't have an accident. Didn't have a chance. Something wrong with us, Mike. I know. What about going to that place Gerald told us about? That uh, dancing club, the, the the hip something. The hip bath. Sounds awful. Typically Gerald. Well, what do we want to do then? Uh, I think I want to be sick. I've got the address somewhere. I'll go and get it. Hey, don't take my jacket. Well, this is it. If you think I'm drinking in a beanie, John, you're mistaken. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Live it up a bit. Slum a little. Come all on. right, but don't forget this was your idea. All right, all right. Ah, oh, good evening. Good evening. You blokes members? Uh, no, but uh, Gerald Patmore said it would be all right if he used his name. Uh, he is a member. He'll be coming along later. Uh-huh. I think. You come to dance? Well, if we'd come to ride bikes, we'd have our trouser clips on, wouldn't we? Ha-ha, <laughs> very funny. We do get characters come along here for another reason, you know. But I don't need trouble, you understand? Well, neither do we. All right, that's two guests, that's five shillings each. Ten bob. Right, hang on a second. Pay your money, you must have a receipt. Let's have your hand. Right. Enjoy yourselves. Have a ball. Hey, 
darling. It's only a month or two. Or three. Oh, Lord, it's almost 12 o'clock.
now you've got an Oedipus complex. A what? An Oedipus complex. You see how you've drawn the son, your father, right by the house, which is you. And look where you put the cat. What does that mean? Well, that means you're sexy. Well, that's nice to know. But why? How do you work it out? Instinct. Well, you see, you put the cat right up against the tree. That's your libido. Libido? What on earth's libido? Have they teach you anything at university? Don't you know anything about psychoanalysis? We haven't got to Freud yet. Oh. Well, you ask your professor what libido is. Ask me. Try it with me. Let me have a go. Oh, all right. What do I have to do? Uh, well, you see, uh, this'll do. You draw, do a drawing like that. Uh, you put in a house, and a path, a pond, a tree, sun, and some bushes, and a cat. There we are. That's right. Very good. Now, you see, the house is you, the path is your career, the sun is your father, the pond is your mother, the tree is ambition, the bushes are friends, and the cat is sex. I can uh, see that sex plays a very important part in your life. I think it plays a very important part in your life. No, no, seriously. I mean, look how you put the sun right up against the bushes. Well, now, since the sun is your father and the bushes are friends, that means that you prefer boyfriends to girlfriends. Me? I'm different. Let's get with it. Hey, where do you get all this psychoanalysis stuff from? Well, a chap's got to have some sort of line. Oh. And do you? Oh. Right, let's go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> She's not here to dance. Go on, get back to the bar. I don't like your tone of voice. Are you with him? Yes, that's right. Well, are you members? Oh, we're friends of Gerald Patmore. Well, Patmore's not here. Well, he's coming later. Yeah, well, he's not here now. And guests have got to be here with members. That's the law. Now, will you please get out? Leave this. It says paid, and we can dance with whoever we want to. And if you want to get us out, you'll have to chuck us out. Oh, well, I can arrange that. Oi. Well, I'll say one thing for Spike. He certainly can arrange things. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've had it. Come on, let's go. God, I'm bleeding. My legs all wet. That's not blood. That's rum. Phew. What a waste. Well, there wasn't much left anyway. Oh, you smell like a cheap boozer. Boozer may be, but cheap never. That cost me a packet. God, I feel awful. Do you think something's wrong with that Coke? No, it's the cold night air. Come on. I think I'm going to be sick. So be sick that way. Uh. No, I'm not. I'm all right. You shouldn't have had all that muck on an empty stomach. That's an idea. Let's get something to eat. Where are you going to get something to eat at this time of night? At an automat. Where's there an automat? I don't know. Simon, not here somewhere. Which way? Don't know. That way, I think. All right, come on. I'm with you as far as the park now. Oh, John, please go back. It's dangerous. Dangerous? Who the devil's going to see me at this time of night? <sighs> Rose up round by the gardens. There's a diversion. What's the best way from here? Right or left, it doesn't really matter. I 
kind of dancing. I don't dig this sort of thing. Look, I'll leave the dancing to you, huh? Started twisting. God, I'm hungry. I said I'm hungry. So you're hungry. Come on, for God's sake. Food. There's nothing in this. Yes, there is. Ham sandwich, two bob. You've got a two bob. Half a crown. No, that's no good. It's just two bobs only. Well, that's that then, isn't it? Come no, on. hang on. I've got them here somewhere. It's in the lining. There's a hole in my pocket. Oh, there's a hole in his pocket. <laughs> dear Liza, that's... dear Liza. There's a hole in his pocket. Dear Liza, a <laughs> hole. Hello, home, please. Dear Liza, what's this then? Congratulations. Where do I put the money? I could tell you. Now what? Press the button. Run open. Are you sure you pressed the right button? Of course I pressed the right button. What did you take me for a complete idiot? I was afraid you were going to ask that. It must have been a bent coin. Look, try this rejected thing. No, nothing. Well, you'll just have to wait till we get home. I put two bob in. That I want my sandwich. Give it a bang. Had something drop. Something happened. What's going on here? Put two bob in that thing. Nothing came out. Have you tried the return coin? Yeah, but nothing returned. Have you got change for half a crown? Oh. <laughs> you think I'm chucking good money after bad jaw nuts? I put two bob in that thing and I want my sandwich. Now then, stop that, son, else I'll have to run you in for causing a disturbance. You have to run us in. I've been robbed. They're the people you should be running in, not us. Oh, well, you can come back in the morning and get your two bob back from the man in the shop. Come back here for a lousy two bob. You run along and catch a few burglars and leave us to our business. Now, just stay away from that machine, son. I'm warning you. Go and persecute some motorists, huh? Right, that's enough. I'm taking you in, son. Hello. Don't you interfere! Ah! What happened? I hardly touched him. I saw you. You deliberately pushed that policeman. You probably killed him, you hooligans. It's a dead end. I hit him. I hit him, Mike. What do you mean? The man that was chasing us, I hit him with a brick. What? Back there. Crikey, you did hit him. Is he dead? No. No, he's still breathing. I think he's just knocked out. Come on, let's beat it then. <laughs> we can't. We're cut off. Give me a hand. What are you going to do? I'll shut up and do as I say. Behind those dustbins. Good night, Alfred. Thank you for a lovely evening. I did enjoy myself. Well, so did I. I had a marvellous time myself. Are you doing anything tomorrow night? No, don't expect so. Well, how about coming out with me again? I'd love to, Alfred. Would you? Well. What 
are we going to do, Mike? We can't just leave him here. Why not? He's all right. He's only knocked out. You said so. He's okay. Come on before he comes round. No. I'm not a doctor. He might be badly hurt. Give me your lighter. No. No, that's all I saw. These men you saw with the policemen, what happened to them? I don't know. One minute they were there, the next minute I looked and they were gone. Is the policeman badly hurt? We don't know yet. Till we get him to hospital. <sighs> I, I just can't believe it. I, I, I've never been involved in anything like this before. It's unfortunate that no witnesses have come forward and that you were alone in the car. May I use your telephone? I want to call my husband. Of course. I, is that all right? Uh, the phone's just inside. See if you can find something to put under his head. Yes, all right. I found something. I found a torch, too. God. How is he? I don't know. He looks pretty bad to me. Oh, God tell me what you want to go and hit him for. I didn't want to. I just chucked a brick at him to sort of scare him off. He'd have nabbed me if I hadn't. It's truth. It just isn't your night, is it? I didn't think I'd hit him. Perhaps I didn't. Perhaps he tripped. Yes, he must have tripped. See, I tripped over that bloody great pile of bricks. You hit him, all right. It doesn't look a bad cut, just a graze. And he's out. Really out. I, I think the bleeding stopped, though. Mike, let's give ourselves up. We could explain. What? The police would understand. Look, we can't do any more here. This chap may be badly hurt inside or something. Supposing we were to... Wait a minute. We've got to think. We've panicked enough for one night already. What else can we do? Look, Tony. You pushed a cop around a No! Yes. And then, then, to prove it, you did a bunk. I was scared. I'm not satisfied with that. You go and fling a brick in a chap and knock him out. Well, if you can explain all that away, good luck to you. But I don't want to be around when you try. Mike, you're not going to... Pull to... out from under? No. But I don't want to get my own throat cut either. Sylvia? It's me, Lisa. Something terrible has happened. There's been an accident. I've, I've knocked down a policeman. Sylvia, listen, please. John was with me. No, no, not now. He's disappeared somewhere. I, I'm sure nobody saw him. Look, I must ring off. I'm supposed to be telephoning Charles. Yes, y yes, I'm going to, but I don't think he's back yet. Look, if he phones you, will you tell him that I left you ten minutes ago? Yes, I have to go to the police station now. <sighs> don't worry. It's all right as long as we stick to our stories. Yes, yes, I I'll phone you tomorrow. Goodbye. We could say it was an accident. Yes, we could say it was an accident. And supposing, just supposing, that for one tiny minute they believed us... Why that... shouldn't they believe us? We're not criminals. No, not criminals. Hooligans. That's what he said. And that's about the best we could expect. To be branded in the newspaper as hooligans. Juvenile delinquents. Oh, yes, I can just see it. And the firm would have to get rid of us, of course. They couldn't afford that kind of publicity. And your mother. God, it would kill her. Let's go, Mike. That policeman, he'd never recognize us. He couldn't possibly remember us. And what about him? 
He's all right. You said he was only knocked out. Well, I also said I wasn't a doctor. Do you mean... I mean, we've got to get into a hospital. But that's the same as giving ourselves up. No, no not necessarily. Look, supposing we phone for an ambulance and tell them that there's a man lying injured in the garage here. Who's to know it was us that called? And then by the time the ambulance arrived, we'd be miles away. Yes. But what about the driver of the car? What about him? The one who knocked the copper down. He could have told the police about us. No, not about us, Tony. Two youths. Any two youths. Yes. Let's phone. Let's find a phone box, Mike. Ambulance, please. Ambulance? There's a man lying injured in the garage here. The address. Where the hell are we, Tony? Uh, uh, 8, 8, uh, Conduit Muse. It must be the chap who owns the place. We should have gone before. We should never have phoned from here. Shut up. We've had it now. Shut up and listen. Look, the moment he opens the doors, push straight past him and run like hell. All right? Now remember, the moment he opens the doors. gone into the house. He's not putting the car away. Come on, let's get out while we can. He's parked the car right up against the doors. They won't budge any further. Darling, you home? Lisa? Oh, Sylvia. So sorry to disturb you. Is, is Lisa with you? Oh, I see. Oh, good, good. No, it's getting late. I was a bit worried, that's all. Good night, Sylvia. reading some papers. What are we going to do? Well, he can't stay up all night. We'll wait till he goes to bed and then we'll go out through the front door. But what about his car? What about it? Well, he's not going to leave it out all night, is he? Supposing he decides to put it away? Well, that's a chance we'll just have to take. Some people leave their cars out all night. Not if they've got a garage to put them in. Well, all right, you think of something. <laughs> Supposing he comes to? And the ambulance? You phoned the ambulance. We're sunk. Well, I'm not sure whether or not they got the address. But anyway, if we can't get out, we'll have to find somewhere to hide. Hide? I think we can get in here. God! Mike, come over here! What's the matter? I think he's dead. He mustn't be. No. No, I don't think he is. But he looks worse. I didn't murder him, Mike. 
It was an accident. They will believe it was an accident, won't they? It doesn't matter whether they believe it or not. The important thing is that they never find us. This doesn't change anything. All we've got to do is to hide. It all happened so suddenly, there was nothing I could do. I stamped on the brakes, but there was no time. The policeman suddenly staggered back across the pavement and in front of my car. It was impossible to avoid hitting him. When did you last have your brakes seen to, madam? It's, it's a new car. I've only had it a month. How long have you been driving? Over ten years. I've, I've never been involved in any sort of accident before. I was alone in the car, and as far as I know, there were no witnesses other than the two men I saw with the policeman. Why didn't these two men you saw come forward? I don't know. I didn't see. They were behind the car when I stopped. They must have run away. Did it look to you as though the policeman you knocked down was trying to arrest these two men and they were resisting? I don't know. It, it all happened so quickly. One minute the policeman was on the pavement, the next minute he was in front of my car. Is this correct, madam? Yes. Will you sign it, please? Now, I must warn you, proceedings may be taken against you for dangerous driving. But that's unfair. It wasn't my fault. No, I don't say you will, but I must warn you. You say you were alone in the car. Now, unless these two men you saw come forward, there are no witnesses. Of course, it depends on the evidence of the constable, if he recovers. And I'm afraid I'll have to keep your car here for the night. There may be further investigations to do in the morning. You understand? But how? You... You're not going to keep me here. Oh, good gracious, no, Mrs. Grant. We know your address. Higgs, I want you to take Mrs. Grant home in the squad car. Eight Conduit Mews. And when you get back, put her car around in the yard. Very good, sir. Thank you. So the ambulance isn't coming. I'll see what he's doing. He's still just sitting there. It's the ambulance. Darling. I'm afraid your wife has been involved in an accident, sir. Darling, you hurt. No, no, I'm all right. I'm sorry, sir. Perhaps I'd better explain. Yes, come in, officer. Come in. What happened? According to your wife, a policeman stepped off the pavement just in front of her car and was hit by it. What do you mean, according to my wife? No witnesses have come forward. I see. Was the constable badly hurt? He was taken to hospital. Unconscious. And where's my wife's car? Is it damaged? One of the lamps was put out of action. We drove your wife back from the station. Station? Mrs. Grant came back to the police station with us. The doctor gave her a sedative. I'd, I'd like to know how badly hurt that constable is, the one I knocked down. Yes, madam. I'm sure you'll be told. Good night, sir. Good night. Adam? I couldn't help it, Charles. It wasn't my fault. He just fell in front of the car. You know how careful I always am. I wasn't even doing 30. You mean that he just stepped off the pavement in yes. front of your car? No, no, no. It wasn't like that. There, there were two men on the pavement. I, I think one of them pushed him. 
Darling, surely you must know if one of them pushed it. I wasn't looking at them. I was looking where I was going. I was aware of some men on the pavement and some movement and he just fell in front of the car. Darling, don't upset yourself. I'll get you a drink. What happened to the men? When I'd looked, they'd gone. They must have run away. Yes, and then what did you do? I got out of the car. I saw the policeman lying in the road. I, I, I thought he was dead. There wasn't anybody there to help me, so I, I rang the bell of a shop. The man, the shopkeeper, phoned for an ambulance, and the police car came, and they said I had to go with them. But, darling, why on earth didn't you telephone me? I didn't know where you were. Well, now, when you got to the police station, did you sign anything? Yes, a statement. Just what I told you. Suppose the man dies. They can't do anything to me, can they, Charles? No, darling, of course not. But I do wish there'd been a witness. You are quite sure that nobody saw the accident? No, just the two men. Yes, so if they pushed him, they're hardly likely to come forward. Where did this happen? Just near here, in Triton Street. From Sylvia's. It was a detour. Charles, it wasn't my fault. No, darling, no, no, of course it wasn't. Now, now, don't you worry. I'll look after everything. Would you, would you like another drink? No, I just want to go to bed. It's too much of a coincidence. Oh, there can't have been two policemen pushed under two cars at the same place in the same time. I tell you, she was driving the car. But why did she say she was alone? Don't you see? He's her boyfriend. We chose this house, brought him here. Fantastic. He looks awful. I never knew anyone stayed unconscious so long from a bang on the head. Well, lucky for us, he has. Look, we'll have to phone the ambulance again from a call box. Oh, he's put the catch up. We'll have to force it. Look, there are plenty of tools. See if you can find a screwdriver or something. Yes, that'll do. I'll get on to Sanders first thing in the morning. He'll take care of everything. I doubt if there'll even be a charge. Pity there wasn't a witness, but you've got nothing to worry about. You realize I have lost seven pounds in the last week? I've been going to that new Swedish masseur. Excellent chap. Oh dear, I wish I wasn't so bloody old. You're a wonderful looking woman, aren't you? You think that policeman's going to be all right? I've told you not to worry. Sanders will take care of everything. No good. See if you can find a bigger one.
What do you want? You rang for an ambulance, sir? I certainly did not. Well, a call came from number eight, Conduit Mews. Well, it didn't come from here. There is another Conduit Mews, east. No, we've been there already, sir. Well, it must be a hoax. Is that your garage, sir? Yes. Well, the message said there was a wounded man in the garage. Well, absolute rubbish. I'm sorry, sir. I can't go until I've had a look. Well, have a look. It's not locked. I can't, sir. There's a car parked against the door. Oh, wait a minute. I'll come down. This is quite ridiculous. It's obviously a hoax of some kind. However, you can see for yourself. Oh, God. You had no idea he was here, sir? Heavens, no. Is he dead? No. Knocked out. A crack on the head there. Would you ask my mate to fetch a stretcher, sir? Yes, of course. Oh, your mate wants you to bring a stretcher. Do you know him, sir? I've never seen him before in my life. Name seems to be John Crichton. Mean anything to you? Not a thing. There's been an accident, darling. Oh. Hello. This chap's a diabetic. He's in a diabetic coma. Well, what does that mean? It means that if we don't get him to hospital pretty quick and give him a shot of insulin, he'll snuff it. Don't diabetics usually carry a hopper drink? Right, lady. No, nothing. Look, Slippy Bert, we've got to get him to hospital. Would you mind ringing the police station, sir? We don't want to waste time. Oh, and you'd better give him his pocketbook. Just tell him what happened and that we've taken the man on. I expect they want to take a look around. We let him now, Mike. How do we get away before they come? Lisa, you know that man, don't you? Why do you say that? I never saw him in my life. I was watching your face. You nearly fainted. Is that so unnatural? I thought he was dead. Do you expect to find dead men in your garage at two o'clock in the morning? I've already had one shot tonight, Charles. Yes, I, yes I'm sorry. Yes, I've been shaking myself. You go up to bed. Police, please. Uh, Crichton, 10 Bellisford Court. No, there's nothing else. Yes. Thank you. Tomorrow morning, then. I quite understand. Thank you. Good night.
police won't be coming tonight, but they'll be here in the morning. What was that man doing here? We'll know when he regains consciousness. I should be interested to hear his story. They've gone. It looks as if we've got away with it. I knew we were for giving ourselves up. Still the copper. Oh, he'll never remember us. Just let's hope he's left the door open this time. Come on. Burglars, sir. And what the hell are you doing in my house? Well, there was this injured man, you see, so we, we brought him into your garage. So that's how he got there. Who is he? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? What is all this about? Well, look, sir, I, I think I'd better explain from the beginning. Yes, I think you'd better. Well, you see, we, we'd had a few drinks, and, and the policeman was trying to stop us banging a machine. We gave him a push. We hardly touched him, but it must have caught him off balance because he, he fell in front of a car. Where did this happen? Triton Street, just near here. Then a chap got out of the passenger side and came round and accused us of deliberately knocking the policeman under the car. What sort of car was it? A white spot saloon. Well, then we lost our heads and started running, and, uh, and the chap chased us into the mews here, and my friend stumbled over the rubble out there and, and got hold of a brick, and in a panic, he, he flung it and knocked the chap out. Yes, but why did you bring him into my garage? Well, we thought we heard another policeman coming, and and we didn't want to get caught. And did you send for the ambulance? Yes, sir. We couldn't just leave him lying there. We used that phone. The key was in the door. Then you came back and parked your car outside the garage so we couldn't get out. Are you sure this man got out of the car that hit the policeman? Yes, sir. At no time did we mean to hurt anyone. It was an accident. Is that correct? Yes. Sergeant, do you think I could telephone my father? You can do that later. You'd better sign this first. Both of you. What do you think will happen to us? I don't know. It depends on a lot of things. You mean whether or not the policeman... Luckily for you, he wasn't badly hurt. But it's still a serious matter. You'd better go and sit down over there and wait. Lisa, those two boys are out there now making a statement to the police. And it's not going to agree with yours. You must tell me the truth about this accident. But Charles, I am. Those boys are too frightened to lie. I didn't say they were lying. It was dark. They might have thought they saw him get out of the car. He could have crossed the road. The passenger door was open. He could have looked inside to see if I was all right. I don't know. It, it, it all happened so quickly. Lisa, I built my whole life around you. I don't know what I'd do if... Charles, you must believe me. I want to. I want to so much. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, but you'll be very glad to know, madam, that the officer you knocked down is going to be all right. Just a bit shaken and concussed. He agrees with the young men's statement and clears you entirely. And the man? I'm afraid he can't help us there. He never saw inside the car. 
So we'll have to wait until the man comes to and we hear from the hospital. We have an officer waiting to take his statement. Now, if you'll just come along with me, there are just a few formalities. Do you identify these two men as the men who broke into your house tonight? Yes. You wish to charge them, sir? May I ask them a question? You may. They're not obliged to answer. Now, think carefully. This man you say you saw get out of the car. Is there any possibility that, in fact, he did not get out of the car, but he came from behind it? Well, we, we thought he got out of it. But I, I suppose we, we could have been mistaken. Everything happened so quickly. We could have made a mistake. Thank you. I won't charge them, Sergeant. I think you're in enough trouble already. Very well, sir. It doesn't necessarily mean that the police won't charge them. Well, you won't need us, will you? Let me know if you hear from the hospital. Of course. That'll be them now. Hello? Yes. Oh, yes. Put them through. It is the hospital. Hello? Yes. I see. Hmm. I'm sorry. All right. Good night and thank you. Well, how is he? What did he have to say? I'm afraid he didn't say anything, sir. Mr. Crichton has died. They didn't get the injection to him in time, sir. They said that if he could have got there a couple Excuse of hours... Excuse me, Sergeant. Hello, Mrs. Grant. Didn't expect to see you back here tonight. What is it, Higgs? Well, I've just done a check on Mrs. Grant's car, sir. It seems to be in order, except for the damaged headlamp. Oh, by the way, sir, I found this on the back seat of the car. Must be yours. Now, Higgs, I want you to take these two young fellows along to the chief inspector's office. Here's their statement. Oh, yes, if they want to ring anybody, they can do so. I dare say a cup of tea wouldn't do them any harm either. Charles! Charles! Wait! 